Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Funny Vlogs. Welcome back to another video. As you can see, Billy is in the background. Say hello, Billy. Hello. This is your League of Ireland prediction video for 2024. And this one was very difficult. The most difficult video I've had to do in terms of predicting the league, the Premier Division, since I started this channel. Last year I got one wrong, Dundalk and Shelburne were flipped. I'm going to get more wrong this year. It's a very intriguing league this year. It's very difficult to predict who's going to finish where, particularly in those the bottom half end of the table. And I've looked through everything with a fine two comb, looked through every squad, thought about everything you can possibly imagine to come to the conclusion with this table. And I'm still not sure. It's very, very difficult. There's going to be surprises. A good side is going to finish bottom, for example. Let's get into it. Number 10 I've decided to go for Galway United, having to thought about it, haven't thought about it a lot. Again, a good side, a very, very good side. Um, romped the first division last year, very physical side, very good at set pieces, got a brilliant management team in Caulfield and Horgan, so much experience there. Brought in experience of the likes of Gary Buckley, uh, Carlo Sullivan and players like that. Patrick Hickey was a good sign, I think. Genoa SLA is one to watch too. Tom Costello. And they haven't really lost anyone, have they? That you would say, okay, there's a loss, you know, the experience with, with Brendan Clark and players like that. Like, whoever finishes the bottom of this league this season is going to be very, very unlucky. But just when I compared them to the other sides, not with a lot of confidence there, I must say, I have them bottom. They're going to be very difficult to finish as well at Eamon DC Park. This is, this is going to be very close at the bottom end of the table. And I don't think we'll know who's going to finish bottom. I'd be very surprised until the last couple of weeks of the season. But Galway will certainly battle and give it their go, a go. But just in terms of individual players and match winners, maybe they just have a little less quality than the other sides. And they've got players like David Hurley, who, if he can transform some of that form for the first division to the Premier Division, would be fantastic. But there's question marks whether some of these players can, I guess. Although I think they look like a Premier Division team in the first division last year. But... Um, I'm going to go for Galway United in 10th place. Now, 9th. 9th. <laughs> now, this was a funny one, to be honest with you, because um, at one stage I had this team in 5th, for example, and now I have them 9th. But that just shows, that just shows the um, the difficulty in, in, in going through this. And I've gone for Sligo Rovers. They finished 8th last year. Um, the league is stronger this year. I think they have strengthened. This is the fucking funny thing. I think they have strengthened their side. Um, they've lost a lot of players they wanted to lose. A lot of players that um, signed that didn't really fit at the club, in my opinion, last year are gone. They've added a bit more Premier Division or League of Ireland experience to the ranks. The likes of J.R. Uh, Wilson, Simon Power, Conor Malley, um, and Ed McGinty, of course, is back as well. And... That's one of the main reasons why I was thinking they could finish fifth, sixth, and they could easily finish there. But I just, again, looked at the other teams. I think one of the big things with Sligo they might lack compared to the teams that picked ahead of them is goals. Not sure the goals are going to come from. Uh, Owen Eldin is 17. I think he's excellent potential. But do you need to put pressure on him that, you know, depending how well he does or not, might be where to finish. Like, like that's 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 difficult to ask from a seventeen year old. To be fair, um, but they have some good players. Like Nine Morgan, I think is a good player. Maybe didn't have the best of seasons last season, etc. And as I said, they've added quality to their ranks. A couple of loans in, like Charlie Wick and Ollie Denham, um, but they might be gone in the summer. Uh, Ellis Chapman, another one, but sorry, Charlie Wick actually wasn't isn't a loanee. He's actually signed, but uh, Ellis Chapman was. But he's been doing well in pre season. It's so difficult. It's so difficult because I think they look better than last year. Yes, I have them ninth in the league. Um, they could easily finish higher. They could easily finish higher. On to eighth position in the league. And I have, <laughs> again, I'm going to get crucified for this, but again, good feeling, thoughts, etc., etc. I've gone for Dundalk. I've gone for Dundalk. Um, more so... It's the unknowns with Dundalk. A lot of players in and loan. They've three and loan at the moment. Um, I think they're going to have four and loan soon. Some of their signs look uninspiring or chancy, let's say. Um, again, Steve O'Donnell's kind of targeted the Scottish market more, hasn't he? And he's brought in players like Robbie Mahan back from Motherwell. Was with Bowles at younger age. Likes of Ross Monroe from Ross County. Jamie Gullen from Wright Rovers, who they're going to be pinning their hat on. 
Uh, Kieran McGuckin from Rotherham, but I believe either he's Scottish or played in Scotland, the same with Scott High. And Zach Brad- Bradshaw, the recent one alone from uh, Lincoln, Barry Keane, for example, is the only player that brought in uh, from the league to the club from UCD. And they've lost a lot of experience, like said, Dan Kelly, you know, Keith Ward, John Martin, Robbie, Robbie McCourt, Darren Leahy, Pat Hooban, clearly, and Greg Sloggett. And I just think um there's a bit of pressure on them this season Dundalk in that regard and they're going to hope that some of these players more of these players that we don't really know let's be honest do better than you know more than do better than not essentially because um you know it could be a struggle for them like are they willing to battle if they're near the bottom of the league or for example as well that's the big question goalkeeper Shepard has gone too so for me, they've lost a lot of key players, actually. I think they've lost a lot of key players. And, um, you know, again, a team that's gone well could finish in around fifth. But, um, yeah, for now, I have them eight. I think some of their most experienced players, like Benson and Mountney, it's hard to keep them on the pitch. And I think that's a big a big thing for them, too. And, again, it's difficult for me to see a lot of goals in the team. Um, the pin on their hat and Jamie Gullen, he could do well, who knows, but very hard to replace a presence like Pat Hooban, but uh, Dundalk might be a surprise to many. Eighth in the league. Seventh, I've gone for, and I still think by the time this video goes out, they might sign one or two more in, potentially. Uh, I've gone for Waterford FC. Again, they could finish six, seven. They could finish bottom. You're not a kind of way. You could flip Waterford and Galway. It's so difficult this year. Um, but I like the way they brought in a lot of League of Ireland experienced players, players that have obviously played in the league. Uh, last year they did well to get promotion. I think Galway were more of a team last year. I think Waterford had more individuals. Um, those individuals might, in my opinion, um, help you through in the Premier Division a little bit better. I think that you've got players who can do something, you know, on the spur of a moment. For example, like you know Romeo, for example, a seventeen-year-old player. He's got a bit of quality about him. They brought in obviously players like. Uh, Barry Bagley's come back on loan. Patrick Ammons come, could be a big one from Bromley too. Um, with the experience he has, can they get the best out of him? Um, can they use him as a poacher and can he get the goals? If he can, then... Like, there is goals in their team. Connor Parsons, another one who's capable of scoring goals. of a solid midfield, like so Bagley in particular, McDonald. A uh, big year for Ben McCormick, though, in my opinion. Um, brought in a couple of uh, Polish players. Radowski came in from... Uh, from Bowles, obviously, and a, a young ringer, winger called Skrinski. I, I forget it, forget about it, but uh, keep an eye on him as well. I just think there's a young, youth, vibrant feel about Warford. May need to improve at the back a little bit. We're not talking about winning leagues or coffee for Europe here. Again, they'd probably be happy with staying up, generally. Um, but a couple of loans in as well. It'd be interesting to see how they go too. Uh, did they lose anyone that is key? Just Roland Coughlin, really. Um, but potentially replace them decently, let's say, with Paul pa- Regamond. They probably think down there that they, you know, what else could they have done? And say you have a vibrant team, and then you've got Amon there as well. Uh, defensively, I think they might be the strongest. That's the only thing, but I do see goals in their team, and uh, for me, that's a massive thing. So, uh, Waterford FC in seventh place. Now, in sixth place, I've gone for a side that... Um, some people would say are overachieving if they finish there this season because it's the smallest bu- budget in the league. But I have gone with uh, draw the United. Now, I believe, you know, obviously Kevin Doherty is his first year uh, as a full-time manager in this in this league. And uh, every manager in the league is full-time now. We'll draw are on their way to being a full-time club um, next season. T- two seconds, guys. Just something there. Pressing the button. Uh, sorry, Drotter are on their way to being a professional club next season, full time professional club next season. So they want to stay in the Premier Division. But I think the difference with Drotter, you, I kind of know what you're going to get from Drotter. You're going to get fight. You're going to get generally very difficult team to play against, and which are some of the other sides you don't know what you're going to get. And that could be a massive thing for them. Yes, they've lost players, but they haven't lost as many players. They normally lose every season in terms of key players. Like Dale Rooney, obviously, and Connor Keeley were massive players for them, but. You know, outside of that, they haven't lost too many. I think they replaced Keeley reasonably well as well with Jack Keeney from UCD, who's a very good leader. 
Um, France, Perot, I think there's goals in the team as well. Perot, um, not just with goals, but um, he'll cause problems up front and open things up for others. Warren Davis is a player to watch. I think he could do well this season. Killing Callis has come in, so good good options in attack there, I think. A um, couple of loanies, of course, from Lincoln too. Oshin Gallagher and Hayden can have come in um, on loan to the club. So, you know, with Trotter, you know, I'm looking at them and I'm kind of going, yeah, there's a bit of a, you know, it's the fight togetherness that they definitely bring to the table. I think they brought in some good leaders. Dave Webster is another good leader they brought in. And I think they'll carry that fight throughout the season. They could, out of the teams, I've been, when I say these teams, six to 10, nearly any could finish bottom. The mo- one I feel more confident with is actually not finishing bottom is draw to come back to bite me at the end of the season. But I just believe that, you know, they have signed well, um, settled club, settled manager, haven't lost too many big players either. So for me, draw to a very good chance of finishing sixth in the league. Now, fifth is Billy's team. I have Bohemians. Um, and a lot of people are saying Bohemians are going to struggle this season. Maybe they will, but I still think they've enough about them to finish above most of these teams I've just named. Um, because they still have a core group of players. Yes, Afalabi is gone, but he was always going to go. Um, wasn't he this season? So, like some of the players I brought in, okay, Dale Rooney, I think, is a good player. I think he improves some. Cornwall is better than the defenders they've had. I don't think he's as good as people say he is, but he's better than the defenders they've had. Brings a bit of leadership there to the back line, too. The unknowns, Martin Miller, Michael Lohander, and Sten Rancourt, for example, and the Polish keeper they've recently brought in is obviously a problem, and it's a bit panicky in that. And I don't care if they have 100 caps for Estonia. We've seen players from Estonia with multiple caps before come over and struggle in this league, uh, including at the club. Uh, I support St. Patrick's Athletic. So um, I wouldn't be swayed by that, to be honest with you. But some of the players have lost, as I said, who have they lost, really? Afalabi. Yes, they could have done more. Yes, they could have maybe made, their, made signs earlier. That's something that you should be looking to do. But... When you look at their squad, it's still quite, it's actually quite settled overall. It might be the biggest squad, but they've got young players there that can come in and add to that too. Uh, it's not point adding players to the sake of adding players, you know. So, you know, they still have James Clark and McManus and, you know, players like that. And uh, McDonnell and Rooney and Grant could have a better season, haven't had a pre-season. Dylan Connolly, um, obviously up front is a question mark who's going to play there, but Afalabi, as I said, were all, was always going to leave the club. Um, but as I said, I, I still don't think they'll finish low, much lower than fifth. I'd say six at the most. I mean, I don't think they'll be in any kind of relegation battle or anything like that. I doubt they'll be in a European race. Um, they might be early on in the season, like, you know, but as the season goes on. So for me, I think Bo's not great, but not as bad as people think either. Bohemians in fifth. The fourth have gone for Shelburne, the team that finished fourth last year, kind of finished fourth with a late flurry last year, didn't they? And uh, Jack Moylan's goals really helped them a lot. Now, Jack Moylan has left the club, and Harry Wood, obviously, isn't there for sec- from the second half of the season. Luke Byrne, unfortunately, had to retire. So they have lost some good players, obviously they have, but I think it's weird. Their starting 11 might be as strong as last year, but their squad might be stronger. I think there's a bit of depth there now. If they can keep Liam Burke fit, it's massive. Manny Smith needs to be fit, fit, fit too, excuse me. Um, John Martin is useful off the bench, can score goals. Will Jarvis getting him back, and then the experience likes of Keith Ward, Sean Gannon, and Dean Williams. So they've more strings to their bow up front, I think. They've got if you look at the four positions: Manny Smith, Sean Boyd, uh, Liam Burt, uh, John Martin, uh, Dean Williams, uh, and Matt. I think I named Matt Smith there already, didn't I? Yeah, but um. There's more balanced goals there than just Jack Moylan's goals, let's say, put it that way. And I think they've really strengthened in that area. They're going to be tough to beat. Um, I think they're the best set-up team in the league. Uh, Duff and um, O'Brien has them very well set up. And they'll fight. They'll fight and be very hard to beat. But there's, there's an opportunity maybe for them if Pats struggle more than people think they, they will. There could be an opportunity for Shelburne to even get in the top three. I wouldn't rule that out. But... I think if they can finish fourth even and get into Europe again, um, that'd be a fantastic season. They do have Europe to navigate this season as well. And obviously that's going to be massive for the Tolka Park faithful. Be very interested to see how they do there. But I do think 
their squad is reasonably settled. They've kept most of their players too, haven't they? And they've added maybe a bit more experience to that. And as I said, definitely have more strength to their ball in attack. And they could be a very dangerous, particularly counter-attacking team this year. Midfield, very tight. They like to get round the play, around, um, around the pitch. I can see them being um, very dangerous to counter-attack this year. So in third place, I've gone for St. Patrick's Athletic. And a lot of talk around each accord, the Pats could challenge Sean McCorvers and Derry for the title. I don't think it's happening. I really don't. I have to be honest here. I think um, they've made some good signings and they've made a lot of their signings early. There's no doubt about that, 100%. The likes of Brandon Cavan, I think, is a good signing. Rory Keating, uh, Connor Keeley, etc. Luke Turner, I think, the latest one, he, he's a good signing too. Um, but there's a couple of question marks. I think they lost arguably the best goalkeeper in the league last year when he, when he played. Um, Dean Lyon, it's very hard to replace a goalkeeper like that. Um, I'd have question marks over the young goalkeepers and Lowe Marcelo from Liverpool. looks a little bit soft for me, personally. Uh, could be wrong, we'll see what happens, but um, is he likely to be as good as uh, Linus? I highly doubt it. And it's that, you know, organisation at the back with Linus and Golder. missing Sam Curses has left, Adam Murphy has left. Uh, Mark Doyle has left his goals. Uh, Tommy Lonergan has left. So Pats have still lost a lot of good players, and I think they've lost more good players than anyone else in the league, and definitely more good players than Derry City and Jarmac Grovers have. So, you know, a lot of Pats fans probably expect um, them to challenge for the title. They expected it a few years ago with Tim Clancy in charge, so I'm sure it'd be no different this time either. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think... You know, I'm not going to talk with the other two yet until we get into them, but I just think that it's again, it's a massive turnover in players again for me. And some players are just unlucky. Sam Curses was always going to leave the club. And um, fortunately, Murphy was always going to leave the club. Linus was like, you know, it, it, it's, it's difficult. It is difficult. But I do think if you're going to put in a serious championship challenge, you need um, need a bit more. I do think they've good options in attack, though, even with Lonergan gone. They've got, obviously, Keating, um, the likes of Levy, the likes of, uh, I mentioned Brandon Kavanagh, uh, Young Melia, too. But um, they got to play to their strengths as well, I think. Uh, Keating is very good up front, but he likes the ball into feet a lot of the time. And I'm not sure if Pats have enough in midfield compared to the other two. Um, the Forster and Lennon, McClellan kind of going to play in there, but he's not really a midfielder. You look at the options Rovers and Derry have, massive, massive difference. So Pats probably should finish third. I think they'll be disappointed if they finish lower, but Shelburne could really push them. Now, in second place, I've gone for Derry City. I think Derry City have added um, a major part of their missing jigsaw piece in Pat Hooven. Obviously, a great goal scorer throughout the years. Pat Hooven brings massive experience. Uh, scoring big games he's got that bit of uh, toughness about him that Derry need I think he can convert some of those draws frustrating draws that Derry had last season into wins Dan Kelly has been a good addition uh, the only player really that they lost that they kind of want, didn't really want to lose was probably Brandon Kavanagh but then again they weren't really utilising him so technically he's not a massive massive loss but they've added to their squad and obviously they have a very settled squad which is a massive thing isn't it for me if you look at their back line extremely set, settled with the players they have in there, the likes of Ben Doherty, Boyce, uh, McJanet, you know, Michael Henney, um, obviously Mark Connolly and the goalkeeper and Brian Maher. So I think that's a massive thing. It's how settled they are in defence. Midfield as well, the amount of options they have. Will Patchy and Patrick McIlhenny, Henney, um, even if he's fit for half the season, you know, Adam O'Reilly, Diallo, I know he's injured at the moment. Uh, Kieran Harkin is back. And uh, there's many more players too. Up front, it's a, a big thing in terms of keeping Duffy fit and, you know, in terms of maybe winning the league. Um, I think that's going to be a massive team. Like Mullen should have a big season too. So um, I do think they've strengthened and I think that maybe McMullen and Mullen, Danny Mullen, uh, would benefit from the preseason, be better for that going into the season. They have strengthened without doing an awful lot, which is what you want, to be honest, because you want to have that second squad. Um, I think they'll finish second for sure. The only reason why I don't think they'll win the league is simply because I think Shamrock Rovers are going for that five in a row, and I think they're very, very strong. But I do think Derry will be stronger this year. 
and um, there might be a bit of a gap potentially between the top two and the rest in my opinion it'd be interesting to see but with Derry City there's definitely obviously reasons to be optimistic about the season and I don't know if they were to finish second but Rovers were to um be brilliant but Derry were to finish second I think Derry fans wouldn't be too disappointed with that the disappointment last year was the fact that Rovers weren't brilliant you know and Derry didn't really you felt like they could have taken advantage and they didn't but I do think that the players to do they certainly take advantage this year if Rovers aren't on it but um we'll get into them now because uh champions I said Shamrock Rovers going to win the championship for the last four years they have and I'm saying it again there was a, a stage earlier in pre-season where I thought hmm, will they have the hunger um will they have the desire will they have the players but the more it went on and on the more I, I stuck with Shamrock Rovers and it just seems like when they bring in players it's a seamless transition you know I think Trevor Clark sign permanently is a massive massive sign and McInef coming back massive Marcus Poom coming back massive and um, the addition of Darren Burns will give them something else too Josh Hoonahan I think too is a good sign and again they haven't who's they lost the only one they've lost really really in terms of impact on the first team squad is Alan Manis and to be honest Manis was nearly gone last year anyway with the injuries I thought Poles came in last year and I thought he'd improved last year so they've strengthened and I think you can see a bit more hunger from Rovers this year too I think with some of the type of players are brought in and with the options they have it's just incredible the options they have the midfield options it's ridiculous Gary O'Neill Jack Byrne uh Aaron McAniff you can play higher up higher up as well Richie Tell uh Marcus Poom am I missing anyone I'm sure I am and uh, because of so many options you always forget when you're listing them out but the wing back position as well Neil Farouge Trevor Clark Lee Grace, Pico Lopez at the back, up front, Gaffney, Johnny Kenny will be an addition to them, I think, this year too. I think he'll score more goals this year. Um, and Dar Burns is added to that. I just think all round they're far too strong. They're hungry. Um, I think they feel like they weren't that great last year and they're out to prove a point, to be honest, which I really believe that. They want to be the first team to ever win five in a row and I think they're going to be the first team to ever five in a row. Uh, potentially they win it easily. Potentially they win it easily. Um, but I think Derry will go with them for a good while anyway. But you can't be but impressed um, with the squad that they've assembled. And, you know, I think, you know, how are they not going to win it? You know, even in an in injury crisis, they can bring in so many players. It's unbelievable. Uh, they have a young player, Noonan, to watch this, or Coonan, sorry, to watch this season as well, who's um, a very, very good young player. So it's just very difficult to see them not win the league they know how to play the game if you like in terms of it's a marathon it's not a sprint they can rotate if something has a knock they just don't play and the next player comes in and um and just seamlessly comes into the side so for me shamrock Rovers champions um overall it's probably the one thing i'm sure of actually <laughs> uh doing this video but overall let me know what you think in the comments guys um give us your top 10 it's very difficult to predict isn't it give us your top 10 i'm sure nearly every person would have a different top 10 i'm nearly sure but let me know what you think fan of any of the clubs in the league leave a comment as i said subscribe to the channel what and don't forget to press that notification notification button for more videos would you take fifth for both um yes, yes. Any other week. Oh, interesting. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching.